best there was, or the best there ever will be. You will rest in these. Best on the mic. Featuring your hosts, Darnell the Playmaker Salines, and from Sportsway, Dre Day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new podcast hosted by In the Collaboration with Sportsway with Dre Day. Y'all should know me by now, the playmaker down there, Silence, along with my partner, Alex, because I the bear What's going on? I uh, got a lot going on, but I'm just fighting life, getting through these difficult times, homie. So, me and Alex, we're going to be switching roles back and forth when it comes to doing the podcast for the best on a mic tournament, but I felt like it'd be a good idea to have him on with me and let us set the ground rules and stuff. And speaking of setting the ground rules, I, of course, I, if I'm collaborating with somebody, I got to bring the person on himself. So from Sports Warrior with Dre Day, my boy, my homie already up in New York. Dre Day, what's going on? What's poppin', man? Same shit, different toilet paper. Just, just like, just like, just like your man just said, trying to live through these tough times. So, and also in the upcoming episodes, Dre will have some of his, some of his, his crew hop on and give their takes on the best on the mic tournament. So let your boys to be ready. Oh no, 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 they're not on this one. They, they, they're not on this one. I couldn't get them on this one. They got some, they, they got some situations that they're dealing with in Florida right now, so they wasn't able to be on it. We got a we got a long way to go. As y'all been keeping up with us on Twitter and Facebook, we are halfway through the first round, and we started this win in, in what May? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I said no, it that time. Yeah. It's been a Seems whole like month. We just started this halfway through the first round. So <laughs> to keep it to keep it. Orderly, we gonna we gonna go on those. So I'm just gonna throw out these numbers in these matches that we did, and then if y'all want to chime in, y'all chime in. Our first op- our opening match was John Cena versus Bret Hart, and the Hitman got destroyed. Eighty six to fifteen. I mean, I expect I can't say Cena to win. I expected Cena to win, so that was that that wasn't a surprise for me. So, I mean, uh, because, you know, the wrestling world that, we, you know, that, that follows us on Twitter, Darnell, what we have to understand is a lot of a lot of these fans, they didn't watch Bret Hart. I mean, they're too young to, like, you know, to see Bret Hart's glory days. And they saw John Cena, so it's obvious that, you know, John Cena won. I mean, for me, I, I went back and saw a lot of Bret Hart's matches. But as far as his, as his promos go, I really haven't seen much, but... But it's no surprise that John Cena won. I mean, John Cena was cutting. I mean, when he was the he had the Doctor of Thugonomics gimmick. I mean, those promos were gold. I mean, I loved them. All right, so yeah, landslide. Another landslide was match two: C. Young Punk versus Shawn Michaels. And when I tell you, um, this is not how I thought this turn was gonna go. Cause goddamn, C. Young Punk, ninety-seven to twenty-five over the heartbreak hit. I mean, listen. Well, that's, that's that's Mr. Pipe Bomb. What, like, like, what, what would you expect? I mean, CM Punk legitimately attacked WWE in a promo. I mean, that that that's the pipe bomb that we remember. CM Punk cut his promos like he really meant it. He cut promos the way you're supposed to cut promos. Whether he was a face or a heel, he lived as his character. That's what a unique wrestler does. So, I mean, Shawn Michaels cut good promos. But Shawn Michaels' best promos, that was during the 90s, you know, when he was, you know, feuding with Razor Ramon, you know, feuding with The Undertaker, Bret Hart, Stone Cold, when he was part of DX. Those were HBK's golden promo years. So within the last, like, you know, 10, 15 years, I mean, CM Punk just beats, you know, Shawn Michaels just like that. It's because Shawn Michaels' promo skills, when he came back in 2002 during that run, his promo skills were still good. But they were not as good as the as the ones during the attitude the attitude or pre attitude era, so that's why so CM Punk won won by a lot. So basically, before he was born again, those were his best promos. When he was a dickhead, when, much, when, the yeah. back, when the people backstage couldn't fuck, when they couldn't stand him, 
and wanted to rip his rip his head open, that's when his promos was top notch. When he became the born again Christian, that's when the promos pretty much fell from the wayside from him. Pretty much, I mean, it's like I said, his promos were still good, but they were not. They were nowhere near as good as ones before that. I mean, during that time, I mean, yeah, people hated him backstage. I mean, we all remember when I learned about the Montreal screw job that he told Bret Hart to his face, I'm not willing to put you over, buddy, because Bret Hart said to him, I'm willing to put you over. But HBK is like, okay, but I'm not willing to do the same thing to you. I mean, HBK really, I mean, HBK was the heel back then. I mean, he was really a heel in real life. Like, he could, people couldn't stand him. <laughs> That's why his promos were so good back then. Uh all right, so we had the uh, we had John Cena new era, CM Punk new era over the old guys. Ah, but there's one old guy who did get a victory, and I was in match three. Jerry the King Lawler went up against Xavier Woods, and with a vote of <laughs> fifteen to eleven, the King took down Woods. Well, Jerry Lawler has been wrestling. Man, he's probably been wrestling for about forty years now. I mean. Jerry Lawler's been around, and he's a legend that's been around for so long. Um, you know, it's a shame because you, we, you, you guys, you know, the you're aware of the feud he had the, in the 80s with, with the comedian uh, Andy Kaufman. You see, the, the problem is, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to go see Jerry Lawler's promos from back in his days because, you know, I mean, they're not really available on YouTube. But, you know, basically the promos I see for him most of the time is the pro, it's, it's kind of the stuff he does on commentary. The stuff he do on commentary make you laugh. He damn, yeah. damn sure, he damn sure does. I'm, I, 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 mean, I don't be disappointed what's hearing he him with Jim Ross. I know, but Dre, you, you like your boy Xavier Woods put up a fight. It just didn't even work out. Listen, if, 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 listen. If, if Paige would have had to say, he'd have won. But she ain't, she, 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 she ain't have to say in it. So <laughs> my, 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 my man X, my man X had to take a, he, had, he, had, he had to take an L in this one. And I like Xavier Woods. Get well soon, Xavier. We miss you in WWE. I mean, Xavier is definitely, you know, I mean, he makes a killing with the promos. It's just, I guess, one of the reasons why he lost is because, you know, how long he's been in the business compared to Jerry Lawler. I mean, Xavier Woods, you know, the whole thing with the New Day, I mean, Xavier Woods just kills it, man. So, you know, because but when you're comparing Xavier Woods to a guy who's been, you know, who's wrestling you know, for decades, who's a pioneer in the business, I mean, it's... It's obvious to me that Xavier Woods really doesn't stand much of a chance, but he did. He fought, and you know he's a fighter, and I just hope, that, hope you know, for the best for him. You know, I miss him too. Would love to see the new day again. Oh, oh let me go ahead and let y'all know that uh, the uh, Alex and Dre they don't have they don't know their numbers. They know how the voting went. I know how the voting went, so they hearing all these numbers for the first time. <laughs> so that brings us to match four: Mick Foley versus Seth Rollins. Seth freaking Rollins. Well, not Simon. even close. Not even Simon. close. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, I know. Seventy-three Foley, twenty-five. Mick Foley. How much? What was it? Well, Seventy-three to twenty-five. Wow. Well, ouch. If 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 Mick Foley never had the mankind character, Seth Rollins would have easily won. But Mick Foley, when he, dude, his mankind character is the best. I mean, the dude love didn't last long. I mean, it was kind of a, it was kind of a rank. The Cactus Jack thing was cool, but the mankind character was just it was just so unique. I mean, he was so over with the fans. I mean, the fans loved him. I mean, fans supported Mick Foley on a personal standpoint. You, mm-hmm. Let me ask you: Do you guys remember remember the night that Mick Foley won his title against The Rock? Oh, yes, I remember that shit very well. I remember, I remember like it was yesterday because I watched that match with my mom. Okay, and then Mick Foley cut that promo after winning the match. That was just one of the best moments ever. And then you know, I didn't know about this until I got older. When I did some research, that WCW attempted to ruin that night by leaking the results, but it backfired on him. Yeah. If Mick Foley had knew, could you imagine if Mick Foley cut that promo attacking WCW? I would have said, "God bless you, Mick," because they deserve it for, for ruining the best night of your life. No, that's they didn't. That was the that was the beginning of the fall of WCW. The exact exactly. beginning. But it wasn't just the mankind character. Like when he just performed as, as simply Mick Foley, or when when he was the commissioner of the WWF, when he did his promos, he he always started out with, with a cheap pop and a thumbs up. We all we all know that. I mean, Mick Foley just you know 
took his entertainment character and just literally gave the crowd a show. I mean, Mick Foley's promo skills is just it's just unbelievable. I mean, every wrestler is unique with their own promos, but Mick Foley is – it's not enough to say he's unique. I mean, he's just magically unique, honestly, if that makes any sense. One of his, but at the same time, it's not surprising because he's an author and he's a comedian, so it, it, it's no wonder he's really good at injecting humor in his promos. You got something to say, Dre? Yeah, like, I'm in agreement with him as far as Mick Foley getting the dub, but one of, one, one, one of his promos that stick out to me, and it wasn't even when he was active in the ring, it was afterwards. Y'all remember when Charlotte and Sasha was getting ready for the Hell in a Cell? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was trying to explain to them that this is not – they don't have, they have no idea what they're about to get into. Like, the, the way the way he sold that shit and the faces that Charlotte and, and Sasha had made you made you believe every single word that was coming out that man's mouth and the, and, and the passion in his voice and the way he was speaking. I'm like, yo, this man is really, really selling the shit out of this fight. And if they – and he, he was the person to pick to do it. Like, if you're going to have these two girls in a hell in a cell and you need somebody to be the pitch to sell that fight, it had to be him. It had to be him. It couldn't have been nobody I mean, else. Mick Foley, I mean, the hell in a cell, I mean, the first thing we think about it, that's Mick Foley because two hell in a cell matches changed him dramatically. We all remember the one with The Undertaker. When he, he was thrown off the cage. He, was, he fell through the cage. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean... I mean, I, I think that deep down he worries for for stars who have to compete in that kind of match. I mean, even though it's you know predetermined, it's all like you know scripted and all. I mean, that it's still a very dangerous structure. It's a very dangerous still structure. Dangerous. Still, still dangerous. That's why, like, that's why, like, I get a fit, like, I get offended when people, oh, wrestling's fake. It's fake. It's predetermined. It's script. But you still gotta go out there and perform. You can still I, get hurt. Doing this shit, like people I'm not can sit here. That, can I, sit I can here. spend a whole episode doing that. People can sit here and gloss over reality TV, ratchet TV. That shit is script. You get paid to be on TV to make a fool of yourself. These superstars are not getting on TV to get paid to act, to act like fools. They're entertaining us. Yeah, it's script, but you still gotta go out there and perform. You put your livelihood on the line. Yeah. All right, yeah. real quick, Barbara the Brain he in twenty two to three over Daniel Bryan. I don't even know how he even got any votes, and I like Daniel Bryan. I mean, yeah, it's, Daniel Bryan, it's the Brain. It's the Brain. Former, but I'm it's, sorry. Go ahead. It's the Brain. That I'm just gonna leave it like that. Barbara the Brain. Superstar Brittany Graham versus Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt took it. 13 and 9. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world. <laughs> that pretty much sums it up right there. I mean, I have to be honest. I have never, ever... I mean, the only time I've seen a a promo cut by B- Superstar Billy Graham was uh, during the, the Paul Heyman's uh, documentary called "My Ladies and Gentlemen, My Name is Paul Heyman. Uh, if you guys have seen it, at the beginning, when Paul Heyman says, you know, he was watching TV one night and he saw Vince McMahon interviewing Superstar Billy Graham, they show that clip. That's the only promo I've ever seen of Superstar Billy Graham. So, and, and honestly, that's that's nothing. I mean, that's probably not even the whole promo. So yeah. that's why, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, Bray, I've only seen Bray Wyatt do more. So that's why Bray Wyatt, you know, and, and mo- most fans are probably like me. They never really saw Superstar Billy Graham because he was so way back in the day. He was yeah, way before back. our time. So. Yeah. Yep. All right, if you're trying to keep up, we had match seven, and it was Macho Man Randy Savage versus Mark Henry. The Macho Man, 27 to 3. Macho wait, wait, Man wait. is one of the best heels ever, is dude. Macho Man, Macho Man went up against who? Mark Henry. Oh, Mark Henry, okay. Oh, Mark Henry, okay. I mean, Macho Man is one of the greatest heels of all time. I mean, those feuds with Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate Warrior. I mean, his voice, too. I mean, you know, ooh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> he just, I mean, and Mark Henry high, and, and being high as a kite. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I guess, hey, Dre, I guess nobody was feeling the sexual chocolate or that fake retirement promo by Mark Henry. That's probably my only one. That's probably the only one that I actually enjoyed from him. 
The one where he faked retired. That's probably the only one that I liked from him. Honestly, in my honest opinion. But Macho Man is just Macho Man. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not surprised. I, I'm not surprised uh, by the dub from Macho Man. Match eight. This is where me and Dre are supposed to have done our first episode, but it happened to happen around Memorial Weekend at the same time, so that didn't work out. It was The Rock versus Steven Richards, and if I can get on my soap, if I can get on my soapbox for one for for just a quick second, how in the hell Steven Richards got a vote in this? I'll tell I'll tell you why. You guys remember the right to censor? Yeah. I I, I texted you I texted you this Darnell. There's there's right to censor sympathizers out there, so that's why you got to vote because one right because there was a sympathizer of the right to censor who no, voted it, for Stephen Richards. It was a it was a sympathizer, all right. My I actually spoke to the guy on Facebook. He actually knows Stephen Richards. Mm-hmm. I mean, during the right to censor when he was the leader of that group, I mean, Stephen Richards' promos were they were actually good. The only hiccup, obviously, is probably because his voice is a bit raspy. But he spoke, you know, he did. Sp- he spoke clearly. He didn't speak fast. I mean, he really did do his promos well when he was leading the right to censor. But you know, but but, I, but other than that, I, I've ne- I never seen him. I, I didn't watch him during his ECW days. I mean, after the whole right to censor thing, I mean, he was around I, every now and then. I but he never not. had anything major. Dre, I said this is going to be a shutout. This is going to be a shutout. There's nobody from the pit. Steve Rizzo, The Rock. Come on, it's The Rock. I don't know. I mean, how many that- good promos does The Rock have? <laughs> Too many. I don't know. I don't know who that person was that voted for Stephen Richards, but whoever that is, find the biggest building and jump because there was no reason for you to pick Stephen Richards over The Rock at all. This should have been a well, land. This should have been a no, all right. in, 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 in his defense, in his defense, when I was talking to him, he was like, he know it would been Rock, but since he actually knows Stephen Richards, he was like, let me go. I know him. They buddies. Nah, fuck they that. nah, nah. I know. No, be, keep it real. I know you know Stephen Richards, but nah. Call a spade a spade. Call a spade a spade. Well, Drake, keep in mind what I said. Remember, there, he's, he, he, it's not only that he knows Stephen Richards, but he's probably a sympathizer of the right to censor. <laughs> nah, miss me with that. But, you got right. cool. spade, well, with The spade. Rock, I mean, <laughs> we got I mean The Rock had so many good promos. When people ask me, what's my favorite Rock promo? I mean, that's just... <laughs> You can't I'm gonna say, a, I'm a, I'm a say that for later. I'm gonna say that while yeah. we go further alone in the tournament because this man. Is. Yeah. Match nine: Jim Cornette versus Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley and Cornette uh, thirty no thirty eight to thirteen. Wow. Well. well <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, okay. Here's why I'm not surprised uh, Moxley lost, and and and, 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 I, and I need to know if you guys agree. Because when Dean Am- when he was with WWE, you know how before coming to WWE, he already had the, the Moxley character, who was kind of like a modern day Cactus Jack, like a like a dude you know who, who's willing to go through hell, you know, just you know in, in a fight just to entertain the crowd. Dean Ambrose could have written his own promos in WWE, but we learned that Vince McMahon never let him do that, and and in AEW he's allowed to do that. So uh, as performing as Ambrose, he was not allowed to incorporate his own. Living character that he had on the in, on the Indies and in AEW, so that's why uh, Jim Cornette is uh, beat him. You, because you can, you can say all that, but you know I'm I have inactive people. The simple fact Jim Cornette says says crazy things on his podcast got him these votes. Exactly, I, you took the words right out of my mouth because he, he he he's one he's one of those he's one of those people like Jericho. Like I catch his podcast here and there too, but Jim Cornette. To hear the shit that he say on that podcast, it's like, damn, like, this is a promo within itself. Like, I'm not surprised that he beat Dan- Dean Ambrose at all. Like, yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not. Listen, he's going to always beat Dean Ambrose to me. I know he's with the whole John Moxley thing at AEW. But for me, he's going to always be Dean Ambrose. Always. But I'm not surprised that he took this uh, t- t- took this loss. I'm not surprised at all. No, yeah, I mean, we get to be the next oh, team. Is, is, is good too. I mean, whether we hate Cornette or not, I mean, you can't deny that his promos are, are classic, and he still has those promo skills. You know, and he incorporates them into his podcast because, yeah, he says the craziest stuff. I mean, <laughs> all right, now we get the match ten here, and this is the one me and Dre was laughing because everybody had a hard time picking. 
Jerry, this was the match between Paul Heyman and Jimmy Hart. <laughs> Me, well, I didn't have a hard time with that one. No, I'm saying you you see some of the comments and they was just like, it's like, yo, how they ain't know how to go. It wasn't hard for me. I knew but, who I was going. But sixty one to seventeen, Mister, my name is Paul Heyman. Yes, yeah, 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 that wasn't hard for me at all. All respect to Jimmy Hart, but he ain't no Paul Heyman. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy Hart was just good at, you know, Jimmy Hart, you know, managed so many teams and all. I mean, I don't remember him much on the mic, but, um, I mean, Jimmy Hart spoke more. I think he did more of those backstage, like, interviews, how they would do these before the match. But Paul Heyman on the mic, I mean, it's almost, a, you know, it's just, you know, also, he also he can also deliver, he could deliver a pipe bomb if, if, if he had the chance. But, but you know, the whole thing with Heyman, I mean, it's it's just unbelievable. But it's also a situation to where... A lot of these fans nowadays that are connected with us, they didn't watch, you know, when Jimmy Hart was, you know, man, was managing, you know, Hulk Hogan, managing all these uh, villainous teams and whatnot. But Jimmy Hart's definitely, well, when, now when it comes to a man, now when it comes to managing, Jimmy Hart would have won. But but since this was about Mike skills, Paul Heyman's definitely better. But if this was a, now if this had been a question, who's a better manager, Jimmy Hart would have easily won, if you ask Facts. me. Facts. All right, so let us take a quick break here. See, we we got six more matches to get into, and these are and now the real talking begins when we get back. All right, so now that we're back, y'all ready for these last six? Because oh yes, you know, we really finna start talking now. Right, remember, remember, how you, remember how you said about that one person that voted for Stephen Richards, Dre? Yeah. I want you to keep that same energy because in match 11, it was Dusty Rhodes versus Lance Storm, and somebody from Twitter <laughs> decided to pick <laughs> Lance Storm if I can be serious for a minute. He, 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 he needs to join that person that voted for Stephen Richards, and they both need to jump off the same building. Dusty Rose won forty one to one. <laughs> that should have been a landslide. The Rock should have been a land the Rock should have been the Rock should have been a flawless victory. Dusty Rhodes should have been a flawless victory. Somebody wanted to be serious for a minute. Are you kidding me? Lance Storm. Better on the mic than Dusty Rhodes. Man, please. I mean, Ed. with all due respect, I don't, I don't remember anything about Lance Storm. I mean, the only thing I probably remember is when he was with Christian. He had, they had this group called, uh, what was it like, the Un-Americans or something like that. Lance Storm, I mean, Christian Tess. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know anything about Lance. I mean, all I know from him is that he's Canadian. That was that's after, he, he was, that was after the Alliance era. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was around that time. But, well, but I overall, know about I know nothing about Lance Storm. The only thing I know about him is that he trained in the dungeon. That's it. That's all I know about okay. him. All right. Well, for that matter, all the Canadians out there trained in the dungeon. Pretty much. Well, Lance Storm is from Calgary, and that's what, and that's what the dungeon is. So, it's no mm-hmm. surprise that he trained there. All right, match twelve: Roddy Roddy Piper versus Elias. I, I tried for uh, Elieski. I, I tried, but I know, was rooting so. for my man. But I knew he wasn't gonna win. I was, I, I, I was rooting for him, but I, I knew he wasn't gonna win. Yeah, thirty-seven to two, Piper. <laughs> Damn. Damn, Elias. <laughs> I, I, I walked with you, Elias, but we we didn't get that far. <laughs> Fuck, we need to get halfway. Okay, we fellas, it's it's it's, it's far, this situation man. is simple. Roddy Piper is the greatest heel of all time, and that is a fact. The greatest heel of all time, and his microphone skills is part of the reason why he is the greatest heel of all time. Piper, okay, ladies, okay, guys, not only is is he the greatest heel, but Piper's Pit is the greatest in-ring segment talk show in wrestling history. (laughs) I mean, there was nothing better than Piper's Pit. I mean, without Piper's Pit... There wouldn't have been all those other segments. Like there wouldn't be uh, Miz TV, The Cutting Edge, or, or Jericho's Highlight Reel, 
or all those other ones, uh, all these other talk show. You guys know what I'm talking about. Roddy well, Piper well, paved the right. way for <laughs> most for most of the guys. If there was a, if there was no Roddy Piper, there wouldn't be Miz. There wouldn't be MJF. There probably wouldn't even be Chris Jericho with the, with those guys with those mic skills. Roddy Piper wasn't just you know great in the ring, but he, his microphone skills and how he, he's performed. It's just it's golden magic. So it's it's rock solid gold. I mean, it, it, I mean, I mean, Elias is cool, t- is great, but I mean, you can't compare anybody to Roddy Piper because nobody will ever be, no one can ever be better than him. I mean, I might be exaggerating, but it's like I said, Piper is the greatest bad guy of all time, and his microphone skills, even even today, at least a couple times a week, I'll go on YouTube if I'm bored and I'll watch his promos because that's just a way to get through when you're doing nothing. When you can have a whole city like Seattle boo you for about eight hours, I mean eight minutes, and just li- listen, I know he lost, but I had to speak on this. I remember that joke too. I was a wish. I remember, I remember that. Oh yeah, yeah. The whole I, thing with I the Seattle Supersonics. I wish I could have been Elias and Kevin Owens in that moment because they listen. They had to get a kick backstage. After that was over, for them to be able to sit there and keep a straight face through that shit was unbelievable. I don't know how they was able to do that shit. A lie. <laughs> that's why y'all don't have. That's why y'all don't have the super sons. That's why they left the Oklahoma City. Yo, he had a nerve. He could listen. If I was a part of the writing team, I would have said dig even deeper. Like if you really want to get at them. It doesn't make sense to throw the ball at the one yard line instead of handing it off. They would have really got a kick out of that shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, I told y'all, told y'all this would be really start talking. Uh, I speaking, I said I tried with the last. I tried with Broken Matt Hardy too. I tried. I put him up against Vince McMahon, and that didn't work out either. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out. <laughs> Twenty four to eight, Vince yeah. McMahon over Matt Hardy. <laughs> that didn't work out. No chance in hell he was beating Vince. No chance in hell. But I need you guys to correct me if I'm wrong. If you put the Mattitude Matt Hardy, I think that I think Mattitude Matt Hardy would have done better. Would have had more votes. Do you guys remember the version one Mattitude gimmick? No, it wouldn't because it was all Matt Hardy. Okay, Matt, well, it was just Matt Hardy. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know. You, you, okay. But you know. <laughs> okay, I don't think well. I don't think he was beating Vinnie Mac at all. It's Vince McMahon, man. It's Vince. Well, yeah, hold, yeah, hold, yeah. hold on, hold on. Remember, there's Vince McMahon and then there's Mr. McMahon. Remember, Mr. McMahon's the evil boss character we saw on TV. Man, Vince, <laughs> Vince McMahon point. don't there's, did ring announcement. He don't did commentary, and he don't been a and he been a superstar. <laughs> he don't did all three. Um, not not to mention, you know, he he had a little club. <laughs> you guys remember that club? Not the corporate. Oh, not the kiss my, kiss my ass. ass club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, but my favorite thing, that. my favorite thing with Vince McMahon. I mean, we, we all remember the whole thing with Hornswoggle, the illegitimate son. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just, uh, I mean, the whole thing was kind of silly, but I mean, the day that they revealed that Hornswoggle was his on-screen illegitimate son, I mean, that was hilarious. All right. Uh, what match I'm at? I'm at match 14. I tried with our truth. I tried to put our truth in there against Jake the Snake Roberts. It didn't no. work out. Yeah, no, that didn't work out. No, no. That didn't. That didn't work out. <laughs> no. Yeah, thirty. Our I mean, truth got a new song out now that's hot, but he, that, that that didn't help him in this voting thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thirty. 30, 36 to 19, Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, at least he was close to 20. I'll give him that. <laughs> I tried. I, I tried 20, 24 7, 7 11, <laughs> I 95 champ. I mean. Now, people, I want y'all to go ahead, sit back, and enjoy the next however long because Dre is going to go in on this one. Because I know this is the one he's been waiting to talk about. Match 15 was Hulk Hogan versus Christian. <laughs> and my goodness, I thought we were going to have an upset out the making. 
but by five freaking votes. 39 to 34, the Hulk still pulled it out. I just don't like him. I I, I, I just don't respect him, so I was just pulling for him to lose. I, 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 I kind of figured he was going to win, but emotionally, I was pulling for Christian to get the upset. I, I, I was really I, I was really hoping and praying for it, but something told me Hogan was going to win. I mean, this is Hogan we're talking about. I mean, yeah, we know, you know, say your prayers and drink your vitamins and, you know, you know all that shit. Like, I, I kind of figured he was going to win. You know, the promos that he did, NWO, I get it. Phenomenal. Just from a personal standpoint, I have no respect for him. So I was kind of hoping that he would take this L, but something told me that he was going to wind up winning. If it was enough, like if it was someone else that he probably would have been paired up with, I think he might have took the L. But being that it was Christian, I, I, I didn't really see Christian, the candidate, to be the one to take him out. I mean, I'm surprised. I thought that I ain't. I must apologize to Christian because I actually did this one with who's going to be not so close. <laughs> that goddamn Captain of Charisma put up a fight. I mean, he's got charisma. What do you, I mean, Christian, you know, knew how to work with the guys. And, and Christian was one of those dudes, you know, who didn't have an ego, who's willing to put guys over. And Andrea, I, I mean, you saying, you know, he have no respect for Ogan. I mean, it's because, you know, we all learn these, it, what I like to call it, it's called backstage stories. We all thought Hulk Hogan was the coolest until we start, we get older, we start doing this research. And then we, we learn how, you know, he didn't really care about anybody, all this, all that, all those allegations and whatnot. I mean, I mean, many say that, you know, Roddy Piper was never the WWE champion because Hogan refused to put him over. I mean, I, I don't know that. I can't, I, I can't say that because I don't know if it's true or not, but these are just stuff that I've read. So, I mean, as yeah. far as, I mean, people will ask me, I'm like, do I think Hogan's the coolest, the, the coolest wrestler I've ever seen? I just say no. I say no. I, I, I will say I can name you five wrestlers that are all better, that I think we're all better than Hogan, performance, performance wise, microphone wise, everything. But uh, you know. But to the but yeah, you think about it, wrestling became wrestling because of Hogan. And you can't argue that. I mean, whether you like no, him or no, not, no. I mean, you can't, you can't deny that. Thing, that's the only thing that I give him. Like he 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 made he made wrestling what it is. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have what we have right now. I give him that. That's true. Other yeah, that's that, true. Other than that. Fuck <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, you know, you know. I mean, we, we can't deny the truth. I mean, yeah, without Hulk Hogan, wrestling wouldn't be where it, where it is today. But when you learn all these stories and stuff about him from all from all these shoot interviews, but from wrestlers, I mean, J- Jesse Jesse the Body Ventura guys. I mean, the, the, there's a video about him how he explains, you know, this whole thing about Hulk Hogan. So I mean. Everything I say about Hulk Hogan, all these stories, I mean, these are just from shoot interviews. So, I mean, I don't know if they're true or not. So, I mean, I can't, that's why I can't, you know, throw Hulk under the bus. I mean, this is just stuff I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but but overall, you're well, right. I mean, without Hogan, who knows what wrestling would be like today? Yeah, but if all these people were saying these things about you, everybody mm-hmm. can't be wrong. Might be the but reason why about, he's, he's, he's up by five votes. But enough about him. He won. Fuck him. He goes to the next round. <laughs> and then we get the match 16. It was MJF versus Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. Million and dollars. yeah. Million 30 dollars. to 14, the million dollar man. Well, I already told you before I before we even started. He's you know, he, he sent me an undisclosed amount of money to vote for him. So everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. So I, I you know I, I had to place my vote for him. <laughs> Pretty much, they MJF is up and coming, so he doesn't have enough. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He, he, he don't have that cachet yet. Yeah, he doesn't have that cachet yet, but he's on his way. Yeah, he on he's his way though. He's on his way. He's on his way. I give him that. He on his way. Yeah, that dude make you hate him off rip. <laughs> I mean, he's like that in real life. I mean. According to Chris Rex, I mean MJF is actually a do is actually an, an arrogant bastard in real life. Like he he actually he'll actually make you hate him in real life. I mean he doesn't care. I mean <laughs> he's like Shout New out. Jack. You don't give a fuck. Shout out to Chris Rex, by the way. 
on on oh, the, yeah. on the history lesson that he gave me, Alice about MJF. <laughs> yeah, but um, but MJF is definitely. I mean, he's only twenty four years old. The sky's the limit for him. He's got a very, 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 very bright future. But he's already, you know, extremely great with the mic. I mean, wrestling, he's good too. I mean, I'm sure he, you know he's training every day. He's getting better, but. But, you know, this this kid still, you know, I mean, Ted DiBiase, you know, we, we've all known him for decades. I mean, when Ted, the whole thing with Ted DiBiase, uh, we all we all remember those skits he would do. He, like, he would, he would like, tell a kid, I'll give you, what, what, 500 bucks if you dribble the basketball, and then he oh, would, like, oh, take yeah. it away. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's why I say that uh, M- MJF is a little bit, like, is basically, he, he's, a, he's, like, he's a little bit of Ted DiBiase in him. But I don't, but, uh, but, um. Some people say he's got a little bit of Roddy Piper in him. I'm like, maybe, but, you know, Roddy Piper really, like, exploded with those mics. Like, he would, like, Roddy Piper would, would cut those promos, like, in an angry issue, like like a name saying guy. But MJF is not really like that. MJ, MJF is just an arrogant dude. Roddy Piper was this dude that was just out of control. A quick recap. Cena moved on to the second round. CM Punk moved on to the second round. Jerry Lawler moved on to the second round. Mick Foley moved on to the second round. The Brain Bobby Heaton moved on to the second round. Bray Wyatt moved on to the second round. Macho Man Randy Savage moved on to the second round. The Rock moved on to the second round. Jim Cornette moved on. Paul Heyman moved on. And Dusty Rose moved on. Roddy Piper moved on. Vince Kennedy McMahon moved on. Jake the Snake Roberts moved on. By the way, he still got that damn snake to this damn day. He's, yes, he, he's actually he a, a snake. That, he snakes. <laughs> he's never going to stop that. Never. Be more to Hulk Hogan moved on. And to round out the first half of the first round, the million dollar man Ted Rossi moved on. Any surprises, any objections mm-hmm. or anything? Or are we all good? The only oh. surprise is the fact that Captain Charisma, you know, Captain Charisma almost pull off, pulled off the upset. I mean, we all know that the other two surprises, like we're sh- actually, now this is more of a shocker that Stephen Richards <laughs> got that vote and then Lance Storm got it. So, <laughs> other than that, I mean, the, the tournament's kind of, you know, each pick is almost, is basically the right pick. Like the winner, usually, you know, it's, it's, it's all rightfully so. Usually when you have these tournaments, because Darnell, you, you know, you create this like March Madness, the way, like, the, like the way it's set up. Usually when March Madness happens, you always get that upset in the first round. And Christian was close to doing it. Whether it's one upset or four, we was close to getting one, and we didn't get it. So, I mean, let's see what happens when the first round is complete and we get to the second round. And let's see if some let, let, let's see if some upsets take place. That's a cute cat. Yeah, that's my cat. <laughs> so, all right. I'm just throwing out. So, have... Names that are in the tournament that you haven't heard from yet is Ric Flair, The Undertaker, mm. Chris Jericho, oh uh, yeah, Eddie Guerrero, R.I.P. Bubba Ray Dugley, okay, Porn Orndorff, Stone Cold Steve Austin, oh uh, the Hell goat, ah uh, yeah, Adam Cole is in the tournament. Okay. okay. Velveteen Dream is in the tournament. Ooh. Just for you, Dre Day, Booker T is in the tournament. Oh! Oh! Ah! Yeah! Listen, I haven't, I haven't seen the whole bracket, but whoever he got in the first round, I'm letting it be known he got my vote already. Booker T has oh, my. Oh, we go. We gonna see. We ain't gonna see on that. Remember what you just, Alex. Remember what he just said. Cause that match my- I got for Booker T. Oh, it's gonna be interesting. That actually might be the closest matchup we gonna get in this whole tournament. When in Booker fact, T. I'm about to sneak right now. I'm, I'm about to sneak right now to see who he who he got. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak I mean, right now. To, I'm gonna sneak right now to see who he got. Cause I, <laughs> oh, cause the the next half of this first round. Oh, it's gonna I, be some matchups. All right, he not in the he not in the flare bracket. Oh no, he not in the flare bracket. Let me see what bracket he in. Oh, he got Kurt Angle. Damn. 
Damn. Yeah, we got Kurt Angle. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Uh, yo. I got an Olympic gold. I got an Olympic gold. You guys remember that? <laughs> nah, Angle, Angle, man. Angle had some shit, man. Listen. When we listen, when we get to when we get to speaking on that, when it's over, listen. No, fuck it. I'm gonna just say it now. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you, nigga. <laughs> that one promo alone, that one promo alone should advance him to the next round. I'm not saying he should win all of it, but he should at least get out the first round with that shit. Why do you think I put Big T in the Hogan bracket? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I did? Yeah, I did that on yes. purpose. Hulk Hogan, genius, dude. Just for you, I did that on purpose. I put him in the same bracket. He's coming for you, nigga. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. By the way, we still got Triple H to come up. We still got JBL to come up. Oh, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, y'all are in for some picks. Y'all thought y'all thought the first half of this was hard. Y'all didn't even see the second half yet. Y'all gonna have to do some thinking on, on the real. And Don't it's worry. like Dre said, I mean, if you have it set up, it's like a March Madness uh, bracket, so it's really yeah. good, Darnell. So, we're going we gonna to start off the second half with match uh, 17 on Monday. We're going to let y'all enjoy the weekend. And then, uh, I think, I want to say probably after the 24th matchup, Alex, I think I think episode 2 should be getting ready to happen. I look forward to it. So, and Dre, Dre will talk to his people. If Dre come back with you, that'd be what it is. But after yeah, after yeah, match twenty four, yeah, I'm gonna try to get in touch with them and see see, see, see see what's going on with them. So until after, so y'all got eight matches to choose from the beginning on Monday, starting with match seventeen. I don't even know which matchup to come with yet. But I'm going to talk to the guys off him and probably do what we did last time and see where we get. But as y'all can see, this is this has been fun so far. Yes. Yes, it has. Yes, I mean, the yes. way you're leading, the way you're leading the dance, Darnell, I mean, you're doing a hell of a job. All right. The Bear of Texas, Alex Kazar right there. Yo. Me and him, me and him, we getting ready because we going because as we know. Uh, we still working, still trying to see what the NBA is going to do. They, it looked like they were going to play. Then some other news came out, so now we don't know anymore. So we're going to see. But if they do, me and will be back to talk NBA basketball. It's going to be fun. And y'all can catch Sportsway with Dre Day. Where they can catch you at, homie? It's your man, Dre Day, the Hoods ESPN, representing that Sportsway with Dre Day podcast. Y'all can catch me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, Podbean. You can download that Anchor app. Check me out as well. Cute cat, nice, nice, nice. Um, <laughs> those are some. Those are those are some. Of, those are some of the streaming platforms that you can catch me on. Um, Instagram, Dre Day nineteen eighty five. Sportswear with Dre Day podcast. The links is in the bio and on Twitter. Yes, people still use Twitter. Dre Day 1985, the link is in the bio in there as well. So that's how y'all can get in touch with me. By the way, the Playmakers, we have merchandise. They are ready. They are some nice shirts. So, playmakersblog.threadless.com. Get your shirts. Get your, matter of fact, you can get a coffee mug. You can get a rug. You can get, what, you can get a lot of stuff with the Playmakers logo on there. Also, check out our website where we keep them posted of the tournaments and what's going on. www.theplaymakersblog.com. Check out our website. And if football season does happen, we are switching it up. I'll get into that down the line. But until next time, down in the Playmaker Silence, Alex Cazetta Bear, Texas, Sports Ray Dre Day, Dre Day. We'll talk to y'all next time. Brooklyn is out.